And the problem with the, the radar is we transition from a pulse radar to a pulse Doppler radar, okay, where now um, we can actually look down, you know. So everybody's in the F-15 early on saying, shit, I'll get up here in the high 30s and I'll just look down and find everybody. But the, the radar beam was smaller and, and they didn't understand pulse Doppler uh, engineering, you know. Pulse Doppler is is the, the easiest way to explain it. It's like a train coming at you. You know, you hear it, it gets louder and louder and louder, and then it gets less and less and less as it goes away. When you're in an F-15 with a Pulse Doppler radar, whatever is coming at you is coming at you at a higher frequency than you're transmitting because it's coming at you. Whatever's going away from you is, is coming at you at a lower frequency than what you're transmitting in uh, megahertz. When you're on the beam, a pulse Doppler radar is equal to what you are in frequency. So you're sending it out and it's coming back, same frequency. But the amplitude of that frequency is based on the target background. Well, the largest target out background out there is the Earth. So when an airplane would turn into the beam against an F-15 radar, the amplitude of the Earth relative to the speed of the F-15 measured in megahertz would be could be 40 amps. But the target all of a sudden was two because it's smaller. Oh, shit. Break lock. So you had to understand what pulse Doppler was. And one of the longest classes in the schoolhouse was teaching F-15 radar pulse Doppler. They had to understand what pulse Doppler was and, and what it's trying to give you, you know, and why the aspect of the intercept was so important relative to the target. So what the radar manuals and stuff, they didn't have a warning in there. It said, warning, if the target goes into the beam, the uh, radar will break log and you'll lose it. Oh, shit. You know, that'd be nice to know. But you had to know through study that that's, that's why it did its thing. And how when you saw a target start to go into the beam, oh, shit, I need to either turn away so that I'm looking at it from the ass end or turn and go the same way so that I'm keeping it from, you know, so I can keep some amplitude relative to the thing or starts going into the beam. Oh, I'm getting into a screaming ass dive because I need to get rid of the big target that's below me. That's got a lot of amplitude. And so really the airplane does have a search capability, look down, shoot down, but it's still, uh, as long as the target's cooperative and coming at you or going away from you, that's fine. But if it starts playing with ground clutter, <clears throat> you need to just get down like a normal F4 get down below it and look at it from above. I'd asked you, you earlier about then sort of the, the technological growth, you know, that occurred through the last 50 or 60 years of, of aircraft development. And so, so was the, the, that radar and ultimately the avionics that came into the F-15, you know, once it had matured or was in the process of maturing, was that then representative of a, of a quantum leaping capability did you have to, did you go back to the drawing board and completely revise your tactics? You like talking about to, missile f 15s uh, yeah, up until the MISSIP point, or if you want to talk about the post MISSIP, yeah. yeah. Okay. When MISSIP came out, and we, we got the first one, brand new airplanes, 26 of them. I got 26, and I ended up giving them 25 back. We put one, you know, we lost one. Didn't kill nobody, but we lost one. But the MISSIP F 15 multi stage improvement program addressed everything. It addressed early warning radar, it addressed uh, avionics, it addressed weapon systems. Uh, and it addressed uh, NCTR, non-cooperative target recognition, and stuff that you can talk about now. It was a quantum leap when it came out. And I mean, it took me a lot of study, as, even as a, the commander, you know, sitting in the vault, looking at this thing, going out. Uh, when we first got them, I went out with, we went out with the guys and, and we did very uh, basic shit with them, you know, intercepts, very uh, drew out plays. Okay, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I want to see what it's doing to learn what this thing was going to do. How does it react to a target in the beam? What's it doing now to do that? How's it affecting the aim seven and, and uh, the shoot philosophy? You know, uh, believe it or not, Wayne Waller, same guy. You know, he's there in the vault with us. Going, you know, don't give me a damn shoot cue based on uh, range. Give me a shoot cue based on amplitude comparisons, you know within two amps or whatever. And so it was a constant like that. And so when MISIP came out and, and we had a, uh, that's why like McGill talks about, I'm sure when he came into the squadron, there wasn't nobody in the squadron. They're all in the vault. He can't go in the vault because you had to go through a pretty strenuous uh, security clearance to get your MISIP blessing. 
okay, you can come in here. And, and, and our briefing rooms were the same way. Big, thick-ass briefing doors. You open up, go in, close them. Then you can go into your briefing rooms. They had lights that flash saying if somebody was in there that wasn't briefed, like a high roller, boop, boop, red light going on, can't talk about what we're doing or, you know, this and that. So that's what came out when we got missing. But it took a lot of uh, seven days a week out there at the squadron sitting in that ball studying uh, missing. And I'll tell you as a side note, when MISSIP came out and uh, AMRAM and all that was a concept and MISSIP was going to support it and uh, some other assets, DR, which was the part uh, they do all the, you know, spy shit, they call and said, we want you to bring five uh, F-15s to Andrews and uh, Secretary of Defense Cheney wants to fly. We want him to fly in the back and see all this magic shit that Missip has. And we want him to understand it enough that when he sits in front of a closed door session of the armed services, he can qualify and justify this black program. So the wing commander at the time comes over and says, guess what you're doing? And he gives me the paper. And so I take five of us and we go to Andrews. Go to Andrews. We fly him on Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning, and then we leave, fly him twice a day. And he's in my back seat, and we did a dance of the Sugar Plum Ferry scenarios with the other four. So we'd send them way out over the ocean. They'd come in, and they'd do their this and that, and I could show him track while scam because that was new, and I could show him this and that and give him all the lingo. And then we uh, would sit in the debrief, and, and we'd be debriefing stuff, and he go, you know, you're using slang words. And so he was learning the slang words and he was learning every, I mean, it was really pretty cool for him to be able to sit down and say, okay, right here, you're cranking, right? You're doing a crank and then you're doing, yeah, now twist this, nah, 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 nah. And so he flew with us to understand what this thing was going to be able to do so that he could qualify getting it for us. And flying him was amazing. He was such a hell of a nice guy. He flew in his blue jeans. Really? Yeah, took him a fly suit, got you a fly suit. You want to fly? Well, can I fly in this? Well, shit, you own all these. You fly in whatever, you fly naked if you want to, dude. I mean, doesn't bother me, but I got to fly my fly suit, you know, and there's two stars running around and shit like that. And, and I mean, it, it was it was really pretty cool. He he was really a pretty cool guy. And, and you know, I can remember one day we're taxiing out and the president's wife was saying goodbye to some Chinese lady or something like that. And I, he hears me talking on the second radio, not to the ground, but to other bros. And I go, ooh. Check out to the left. That's the president's wife. And he's going, what, what are you talking about? I said, that's the president's wife. And he goes, yeah. I said, well, we don't see the president's wife. You know, I'm looking at him in the mirror. I said, you know, so we we do that. And uh, day one, we're coming back. And, and I said, okay, you know, everybody take your spacing and shit like that. And he goes, what are you doing? I said, well, we came in here, came in on Friday and beat up the pattern. And I guess we made too much noise. And some 06 came out and just ringed my ass out for, you know, beating up the pattern. He goes, is this how you normally land? I said, no, we come in and make noise in this thing. You know, he goes, make me some noise. <laughs> so we go in and make a lot of noise. And I'll never forget, we taxi in and stop. He's sitting in the back, kind of sitting down. I climb down the ladder and that guy comes driving up in his car, gets out. He gets out, takes two steps towards me and I go, and he looks over and sees him and goes, Okay, and never saw him again. But yeah, so we, that, you know, when we got the airplanes, it, you could have easily got them and not just said, oh, it's another F-15. Oh, it was, it was, it was totally different. Totally different. I mean, I can remember taking new guys in the squad. I mean, Rico, you know, Rico's got three MiG kills. Okay. I can remember sitting in the Army area to take him out on his first, quote, miss a sortie, easy sortie. And I remember sitting in the Army area looking over at him and he's like this. Looking at everything, and I said, I said, I need to I tell him on the other radio. I said, you need a drool cup. Just strap you a drool cup on here, dude. <laughs> I said, you're ready for this. Just let's just go do it. You know, you'll you'll learn it. I said, you know, two two B boards with shit written all over them. I said, just it'll be fine. But study. Hmm. Don't just think you're gonna fly 1.2 hours a day, three or four times a week, and know what to do with this thing. It ain't gonna work. It ain't going to work. Could, could you have done And little did I know that, you know, in August, when they go over there, that they're going to need to use it like it's supposed to be used. And it worked 100%. If you enjoyed this clip and want more, you can go to 10percenttrue.com, hit subscribe, and get early ad-free access to all my content. Appreciate your support.